Where'd you get a bike one? I guess I just bought it off of Amazon. Because, uh, yeah, I want to... Buddy and I started doing a podcast, and then we... Uh, I just got kind of bored. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not a big podcast guy, so... <laughs> I just, I hate doing them. Like, I don't hate doing them, but I just, like... I don't know, I just don't find them, like, I don't listen to any podcasts. I listen to a couple music podcasts. Right. But that's about it, though. Like, I don't listen to, I don't, like, uh, I just don't get into podcasts. And then uh, my buddy and I went out and bought, like, $500 in equipment and stuff. And It's not even necessary. I mean, yeah, I, you know what? That's, this is the $24 microphone. I know, and it's like, that's what I'm like, man, I'm like, we put all that money into it. And then this is how much I'm not into podcasts. Like, we split the cost of it. Right. It's at his house. I don't care if I ever see it again. Right. I just don't, yeah, it's just like, it was like every Saturday I drive over, we never really did anything with it, we must have recorded like 30 episodes, and uh, never did anything with it, so, so I don't know. I try to have my podcast be somewhere in a place where there's just people and activity, like a restaurant yeah. or something like that. Sure. You know, because it gives it this flavor that I like, and because I used to do this show for the, an educational TV show for the Libertarian Party, oh, okay. and we did this, we shot a bunch of shows at the National Convention, and we just, we was in a hotel, of course, so we just were in the kind of the a lobby area, uh -huh. sitting in chairs, we put up our lights and the cameras and, and the switcher, oh, that's cool. and just started, you know, then I was, you know, I had a suit and a tie, I was doing a suit and a tie. And uh, it was good because people were walking by and talking. Yeah, yeah. This gives it some life. I like, we this, did, uh, I like the energy. You know in I Vegas, mean? we had, uh, my buddy was doing a radio show for ESPN. Uh -huh. And we did it right in front of, um, I forget the sports the sports store place, but it was at the Luxor. Right. And it was right, like we did it basically, they s set up a, a stage and everything. And I would I'd go on like once or twice a week. And um, then basically he just did the whole thing right there. Yeah. Right, right in front of us, people were walking by and everything like that. And it was, yeah, uh, we did it for ESPN Radio for. It's interesting and, and and fun, you know. Joe Rogan has made the uh, the podcast thing into a, a real thing. Yeah, of course, yeah. Adam Carolla. Yeah. And uh, some other people have just turned it into this, and you know they're getting mil endless millions of views and they're getting more views than. You know, a lot of cable stations yeah. get viewers. Yeah, you know, you know? I, 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 when I say I don't really listen to podcasts, I'll occasionally like, flip on a Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan, yeah. Yeah, because he's good. I mean, he's good. He's, he's, who he has on is usually interesting and stuff. And I don't know. It's like, um, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's interesting. I like that. Uh, yeah, he has, he has really good guests. He has interesting guests. Yeah. And he doesn't limit himself. You know, imagine trying to pitch that podcast to someone, you know, at no, a, of uh, you know, at a, at a cable station. Say, yeah, I want to interview a, a uh, theoretical astrophysicist for three and a half hours. Right. You know, they would just say, yeah, right. But, you know, I think maybe eventually, who knows, uh, uh, the podcast could actually get picked up by some cable station. Just I'm to surprised. Take excerpts of it. Yeah, I'm surprised his hasn't. You know? I'm surprised his hasn't like gone in that route. Like some cable, like you right. know, some cable station picking USA it up. USA Today. Yeah, something. Or... Just something that that can stream it. It's amazing Anything. that it's amazing that nobody's like, unless he wants full control and so much money for right. it, then people are like, eh, not worth Either it. You just think you could just tell them here, just edit out little parts of it and a little clips because people do that on YouTube. They, yeah. They run whole channels where they just. Yeah, I'm, take I'm, a I'm really surprised he has. Does he have his on YouTube or no? He has. It's oh, they're on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's probably why then he doesn't need it. He it goes onto YouTube and he gets money from that. Yeah, and he's, then, he's got uh, such a he's got such a cult like he lets, following. Right. He lets people take clips of it and put it on their channel. Yeah, he's got to make so much money off of that thing. Yeah, he probably does make a lot of yeah, money off. Uh, of it. I mean, for a sponsor. I was gonna say for that, it's like it's why even why even deal with like a. You know, somebody controlling your show. If you right, put on, why even deal with yeah. some cable company, Yeah, you right? must just must control everything yourself. But I'll bet eventually, I bet an offer is going to come in. It'll just say, all right, you can take 10-minute segments and yeah. stick them together of my guests. And uh, I bet uh, I bet it'll probably work. They have a nightclub you know? up there. Yeah, um, yeah, they do have a nightclub up there. Once, in fact, I was walking by in front of the mall, and someone threw a bottle out of the nightclub, and it grazed my head Whoa. just like this. 
And if I would have been an inch more to the left, it would have probably killed me. Oh. And I'm like, wow, you know, what do I do here? Do I call the cops? I guess not. Who cares? No, yeah, yeah. You know, nothing, I didn't thank die. God nothing bad happened. So. But, you know, the next time someone is going to die, so yeah. maybe I should call them. You know, who knows? The Dave and Busters is here. And, you know, it's kind of an interesting mall. Yeah. You know, I remember when uh, they opened the mall. I was here. They opened the mall. Who was it that sang? I can't remember his name. He's the guy that sang uh, Sharp People Have No Reason to Live. What was his name? Oh, man, I can't remember his name. And then he did the soundtrack to uh, uh, the first... What was the song called? Short People Have No Reason... Short... You never heard that song? No. Short... It was a hit of the 70s. God, thank God. Short People Have No Reason to Live. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's yeah. horrible. I would have... I would have... I would have been so depressed <laughs> if I'd have heard that song. Like I thought, I was like, did he say sharp sure or short? Yeah, sure I, 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 I'm glad. Oh. I'm glad. I hope this guy's career went down the hill. No, that was his big first, one of his first big hits. Oh, Greases. Gee, <laughs> Randy awful. Newman. Randy Newman, I think, is his name. My God. <clears throat> and now he's do, doing the uh, soundtrack to the. Uh, I like Randy Newman too. Not anymore. Not anymore. I <laughs> Jeez, I didn't know he it's did a song funny. like that. It's just a joke. Yeah. Uh, right. You're a comedian. You should be able to take a joke. Uh, yeah, but geez, like his hit song is basically sure saying, "Hey, short people, go go jump off a cliff, will you?" <laughs> Here's a gun. Just start shooting each other. You guys then, have no reason to live. Then he sang. Uh, then he did the Toy Story right. soundtrack. Right. You know, and that was huge. But anyway, he was playing out there on a piano, and then someone climbed up on one of the elephants, and they couldn't get down, and they had to call the fire department and oh, get wow. down off the elephant. Should we, uh, we record? Yeah, we'll record. Oh, hang on. <laughs> That's great. This is it. This is, this I love it. This is awesome. This is the podcast. This is, this is two guys just hanging out at the mall. Hanging out at the mall. Just checking out girls as they walk Walking by. At, looking at girls. I, I, I couldn't feel more creepier on a Sunday, but that's okay. Why that's, not? Hey, you know, Hollywood, you can just throw a rock and hit ten beautiful women. Yeah, you that's know? true. It is amazing, Everywhere. like, how many... Just in general, people though are, are just walking over here. Yeah, it's amazing how many people like, like, come to this area. It's it's Hollywood. Now they actually built some place for them to go. Yeah, it used to just be homeless people dressed as superheroes. Right. Know, hanging out. Well, we saw we saw Spider Man and Batman right. and uh, Superman. That's who it was. The when homeless, we were over. the homeless Spider Man, homeless Batman, and homeless Superman. See, as a short guy, I can't I can't dress up as any character He's other than Ant Man. I can be <laughs> Ant Man was still a tall fella, but I can do like an Oompa Loompa character. That's about it. So there's a there's a character that uh, uh, is uh, God. What is his name? Um, it was pretty big for a while, and he was a member of the Alpha Flight. Someday they'll probably do an Alpha Flight movie. It's called Characters Are Created by John Byrne, if you know who that comic book artist is. But he's yeah, okay. a wonderful sure. comic book artist that in the early 80s just kind of transformed comic book art just with his detail and his precision mm -hmm. and uh, his creativity. I understand the guy's completely batshit crazy too, but he uh, created uh, a lot of characters and he was hoping that he would create a character that would become, you know, well used within Marvel, but he didn't. Are you? Uh, he I'm hadn't. Not, but you know, he's still at it. One thing I never got into was like comic book movies and stuff like that. Like, I'm really? Like, yeah, I just never got into them. Like, I'll watch like Batman, but Michael uh -huh. Keaton, Michael Keaton Batman. That's uh -huh. it. Uh huh. And then, uh, which I don't know. I don't even know what. Would that be Marvel or is that? Marvel, yeah. Mar that, that's that's DC. DC, right? Su Superman, Batman, Green Lantern. Wonder Woman and Aquaman are DC, right? And those are the older characters created in the 1930s so I guess, and 40s in Superman. Right. I guess I would be more of a DC guy. DC guy. Yeah, because I mean, then, I would watch like Superman, and you know, I mean, right. I, don't, I don't like the new ones. I think the new ones are just. I think Marvel everything is. are the newer superheroes. No. Usually created in their early 60s, but they're based on older characters that they own from created in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Fantastic Four, X-Men, right. Hulk, Spider-Man, Thor, Avengers, Ant-Man. Those are the Marvel superheroes. 
and those were created mostly by Jack Kirby. A guy named Stan Lee took credit for it all. It was mostly a guy named Jack Kirby. Really? Yeah, and then when it was sold to Disney, they actually settled with the Kirby family, who was suing. Right. Uh, who was suing over the use of his characters, probably because you know there's all these different, there's all these inter interesting things with the history of comic books, like who created Spider-Man. You know, the guy, one of the people that created Spider-Man, had to sue to get his name put on the movies. Really? So it'll now say. Spider-Man created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. But if you look into it... I've heard that name, Steve Ditko. Steve yeah. Ditko, yes. Yeah. But, but, and he was only paid, like, uh, the page rate for drawing, like, the first 35 Spider-Man comic books. But if you look into it, he there was actually about four people that created Spider-Man. There was was originally created for the guy named Jack Kirby when he left Marvel mm -hmm. in the 50s because he wasn't getting paid enough money for for Captain America, which is a character he created. Okay. And he left and he formed his own comic book company, which didn't work out. And they created Spider-Man for that wow. comic book company. And then when he went back to Marvel for financial reasons, uh, he had showed Stan Lee the Spider-Man logo. And Stan Lee stole it from him since he was working for him and uh, gave it to this guy named Steve Ditko. But when they did create the character, there was another writer at this other comic book company who was an editor who mm -hmm. wrote notes about the character and said, well, you know what? He shouldn't have a spider gun. He should just shoot the webbings out of his hand. And he should do more spider-like stuff, like climb on walls and swing on webs. But who came up with that idea? And that was this unknown editor at this comic book company that folded that uh, Wow. That Jack Kirby worked for, for a while. So that's actually... So there's four people that created Spider-Man. And, uh, but, you know, most of it, you can, you can credit most of Marvel to the, a guy named Jack Kirby. But Stanley like, took them and tweaked them. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, that happens. You know, changed them a little bit. He's like the, the Steve Harvey where the, uh, you know, some big producer of music does the same right. thing, you know. Like he makes up, it more accessible, right? You right. Know, you, make, you make a lot of money off of somebody, but hey, you know what? Everybody's making money. Yeah. Well, except for us who haven't created except, a, a comic book character. But, right. Comic book characters. That's what maybe what I should do. We should do. We should create a comic book character together. I'm gonna I'm gonna create one that's gonna go after. Um, Who's the guy that wrote that song again? Norman. Uh, oh. <laughs> That's gonna be my arch. Yeah, Randy, Newman. Randy Newman is gonna be my arch enemy in this right. uh, in my comic book. Right. Short people have no reason to live, huh? People All have right. No reason to live. I'm surprised you haven't heard of that song. I, you know what's weird is I, 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 I probably have. I just don't know the lyrics. I'm probably humming hit. along. It was a big. It was a big hit for him. I, I don't know whether it was his first hit or it was his first big hit. The first time I'd ever heard of him in the '70s. But you know, I wasn't really paying attention to pop music. I was always into underground bands and punk gotcha. rock. What's going on here in Samsung? They have all kinds of a uh, big uh, thing down here. Yeah, they always have something in the mall. I actually saw. Uh, you know what I saw here? I saw Barry Manilow. Really? Just before I, he died. I think he's dead now. Wait, Barry Manilow? No, he's still yeah. alive. Oh, he's still alive. Still alive. I'm pretty sure. I saw yeah. the actual Barry Manilow sing. It was actually amazing because that's his real voice. He yeah. can really do that. I saw him in Vegas uh, a few of years like, ago. Kind of shocking. Like, wow, he can really sing. He can like still, that. he can still sing. And he's, I mean, he's, you know, his voice is definitely, you know, it's not as strong as it used to be, but, right. but his, and he still, but he still goes up and shakes his hips and it's amazing. Sings. It's amazing. The guy, the guy's phenomenal. So he was, he was here singing, and then I saw the guy, Motorhead just before he passed away, uh -huh. Lemmy of Motorhead play here just before he passed away. He did away. pass away, yes, yes. And so he's gone. So, you know, that's just the way that it is. Let's get out of the sun a little bit. Oh, okay. Are you in the sun? Let's just switch over here. Maybe you can say, if you want to be out of the sun, yeah, sit over here. But, Let's see what we got here. Make sure we're still going. Yeah, you can see the little, see the little red. Right. See the red is like when it's actually too loud. So we're, you know, wow. we're fine. It's good. But the uh, we have a million dollar setup here, guys. We do. You know, if uh, if you're walking around the uh, 
the mall at the Hollywood, you'll see it. And I found Cameras, this, lights. And... I found this wonderful volunteer online that puts my uh, podcast up for me. I don't know whatever I did to deserve him, but he's great. So when and you, you submit it to this guy and this yeah, guy puts it up for you? Well. he just puts it up. And I've got a... Uh, I upload it to Google Drive, okay. and then he downloads it on his computer and puts it on YouTube and on his own website called WordPress. So you've been doing it for a while, right? I've been doing it on and off for a while, but you know, I'm just trying to trying to make it work. You know, what made, what, what, uh, with it. Yeah, what, what, like what, what, uh, what made you want to do a podcast, and then what? I like talking to people, and you know, I think people are interesting. I used to have it educational show with the Libertarian Party. Gotcha. And, you know, I thought, well, what can we do? All we can do is talk, you know? And we put on, everyone put on a suit and a tie and show up. I'd have makeup artists come in. We'd have three camera shoots. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that's all they can do is a lot of the Libertarians are interesting intellectuals with a lot of quirky ideas and interesting ideas and good ideas. I should do a talk show with them. I thought I'll just do a talk show with, you know, comics. Right. You know, that hopefully have something to say. Yeah. And then we, uh, you know, just the people around me that are interesting and, and just talk to them. What, um, do you see, like, where you want to go with it or is it kind I of... I don't know. It's just kind of, I'm just trying to get it out there and get it going, right. you know, and that is something that... Uh, you know, I have and I've been doing is kind of a labor of love. You know, I, I had Anton. I'm trying to ask more famous comedians, mm. you know, to see if they'll come on the podcast. I'm trying to, some of ignore me. Ant came on. He was wonderful. Was Ant, he was on, uh, he's a comedian. He was on, I guess, Leno a couple oh, okay. of times or fairly famous. You know, I'll just start asking people and I just, also, just just ask people that are you know interesting. I also maybe should start to bring on some political figures or different people and yeah, why not? And just see what happens. Yeah, you know, and I guess you always get well, gut yeah. for it, no matter what. You know, the yeah. people that don't like that person, like those are the people you want on. Yeah, you know, like the you know. people that the like people that, that that piss off people. When right. People are like, I'm not going to listen to that. Okay, I want to listen. I want to see what he has to say. How would Mark give that person a... a uh, well, now we're getting <laughs> some helicopters to wait till the helicopter goes by. You know, how would... There's a... Like Rick Shapiro. Joe Rogan would have Rick Shapiro on right. his show. And a bunch of people give give guff for like Rick Shapiro. You know, he's a moderate Republican pretty libertarian leaning on a lot of issues and you know i agree with them on some things i disagree with them on other things you know those are the people you, you, you listen to like i'm not a yeah i'm, I'm not an ann Coulter fan but i'll tell you right. what when bill maher has her on or, right. or when she's interesting she comes on knx out here in oh, la i uh i tend to listen to it because i want to yeah. hear what she has to say i can agree i may not listen to, i may not listen to listen to her radio show right but i will listen to her when she's on other shows if she's think. entertaining yeah, why you know? not I'm going to listen to her. I, you know, so just, I'm a libertarian, so I disagree usually with Republicans and Democrats. Right. And, you know, I'm used to disagreeing with everyone. But people don't rankle me. I don't have to get all upset about, you know, oh, this person's on there. But, you know, uh, Joe Rogan will also have uh, other people that are extremely left-leaning on of course. as well. Yeah. And, you know, I'd like to be able to do the same. I think it's good to have a, to have a, a mix of people. Like, you can't have... Yeah. You know, it's like they were just talking about uh, uh, the DNC not doing any Fox News right. debates, and Which I find I that, that was uh, ridiculous. It's it's uh, you have uh, Bernie went and did one, and it was fantastic. Right. It went over really well. Um, I know uh, Mayor Pete is looking to do one. And, yeah, uh, you need to you, you need to. I mean, that's how you win. Well, you're always going to get. I mean, you're going to go on a, on a on a station where ninety percent probably of those people aren't going to vote for you. Right. What happens if you get that ten or fifteen well, percent that's in that? Centerish. There's the middle, the center of the people you need to reach right. that are leaning one way or the other, and those people are people that are going to listen to some Fox News and then some CNN. Right. You know, both are very partisan, right. but they're going to listen to a little of each, and those are the people in the center that you got to try to reach. Like those, like I, I look at, like when Bernie asked about the 
you know, healthcare for all the other night, uh-huh. the, uh, the um, Fox News one, uh, everybody applauded. Uh-huh. You know, and so it's like, what happens if he wouldn't have done that? And you have people at home that were like, you know, I could probably vote for him because I don't want to vote for the, you know, nutbag that's in office now. Right. So, yeah, I could probably vote for this guy. And then they see that, and it's like, yeah, you know what, I think I would vote for this guy. You yeah. just never know. You just you don't know until you get, you know, and then Mayor Pete, like, I love the guy. I think he's uh-huh. fantastic. And, uh, you know, it's like you're going to get some uh, center people that are, that are going to go forget religious beliefs. Right. They're going to go, you know what, I don't care he's gay. I'm going to vote for him anyway. Right. Yeah, you know, I don't even think that's an issue at all anymore. No, I, well, I mean, on that side it is. Yeah, I well, no, I mean, the two of the top shows on Fox have an openly gay guy named Greg Gutfield, the five and the Greg uh, Gutfield sure. show. And also uh, uh, Shepard Smith. Yeah. So. And so they're very, very open to gay people now, the Republicans are. And yeah, well, uh, Greg I mean, Gutfield came out at the Republican convention mm. in a, to a standing ovation to the whole room. Yeah. So they're, you know, Hopefully, making yeah. sure they're, they're welcoming to everyone. Right. He's, even the religious people that are in, you know, the Republican Party is a mismatch of all these different kinds of groups. And one of them is the evangelists, you know, right. the Christian. And, and their idea about gay people is they should be in church. We shouldn't be excommunicating them. They should be in church mm. with God you know, and we should be loving them and accepting Mayor, them. Mayor Pete's so, a big Christian. You know? Huh? Mayor Pete's a big Christian. Yeah. So I just, I mean, I would love to see somebody like him win. I don't know. It'd just be fun, kind of fun to see uh, see somebody different than yeah. what we have right now. But Well, you know, the uh, I'd love to see the Libertarian get elected, but probably yeah, that's, Ron that's, probably that's, get that's, the that's, same 3% that yeah, he that's, always gets. Yep, that's pretty much it. Who'd you guys have a few years back that was popping? What's his name? Nader, right? It was uh, Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson. Yeah, Gary Johnson. And before right. that, there was a Republican senator who I forget his name. It was Harry Brown. Gary Johnson was okay. Gary Johnson was great. Yeah, he's, he would have he he been much better than Clinton or Trump, in my opinion. But, yeah. you know, what can you do? The next guy is going to be probably Henry Weld. No. But, you know, the thing about Fox News is, yeah, you don't win by not going to Fox News. You know, when Trump started, everyone was against him. Republicans were attacking him. Fox News was attacking yeah. him all day. Until the very day he won the nomination. And so was the left-wing media, CNN, ABC, CBS. He didn't care. He walked in there. They would give him the worst, most Trump-hating reporter with the worst questions for him. And he would go in there and <coughs> and, and counterpunch. Well, you you know, know, that's what I, he is politically. Right. The only when you th- attack him, right. that's when he you're extending One yourself. Thing I'll give that's him credit when he attacks on. you. One thing I'll give him credit on. Is that when he ran his campaign, he did go on every every show, every show possible. He was on uh, CNN, SNL, SNL as a host. You know, yeah. he went on hosted SNL, and of course, you know, they're after him all the time. Right. Uh, um, well, more for rightfully so, but but he went on. He said, "I'm going to do everything possible." And yeah. so to me, it's like that's the one thing that he that's did. That's what that, you have that, to do to the Democrats and not yeah, going to not, Fox. Yeah, this is. I mean, it's when they said that. The DNC came out and said that. I was like, that is like that probably means the, you're not going to win. Right, probably you're not going to win. Gonna yeah, win. you're probably not going to win because because how many people watch Fox News? You have a no, shit ton. more show, more so than all the ones all who the watch ones, yeah. all the other news combined. I know, so it's like so go on the you're station. not going to go on the most popular watch, yeah, cable one, news at, station. In the and then look what happened. Bernie did great in the world. You know, I think people, there are people <laughs> did great on there. But have a debate. You know, go on there yeah, and have a debate. Go on there and debate. You know, have a civilized debate. So yeah. It just, it looks to me. I think that the, the candidates that are going to do well are the candidates that are willing to do these town yeah, hall meetings. Yeah, you have to go in there. On, uh, You've got to walk right into Fox News. Because the center that you're going to be reaching, you already you have your to base. Reach to win, if you win, you have your base. Yeah, if you win the nomination, you have your base. You, you don't have to worry base. about that. You, you have to get those people You have the majority, and you the probably center. have the majority of the population. You know, the, uh, the popular vote pretty much right. done. It's getting those people in the elect, you know, the electoral college that we saw mm-hmm. the last time, mm-hmm. getting those other states to get, to to go for. Yeah, it. you have to have. You have and those be, people watch Fox News. Yeah, you have to you have to uh, get the largest geographic area of the United States right. to vote for you, and as you can. And, we you saw know, the two elections that, that a popular vote didn't mean shit. Yeah. So you know. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's actually, if you look at how much the uh, how much more the vote counts in the flyover state, it's actually pretty slight. But still, you know, what they wanted was 
the direct vote goes to the, the Senate and the House. Right. You, know, you have two senators from each state. Then you have the House, which is representative, the House of Representatives. Which I agree with Bill Maher on the, that Dakota should only have one each. Because really, there's like 10 people living in each state. <laughs> so they're really, the Dakotas should have. So they have different systems to try to get an idea that you have to get the biggest chunk you can geographically of right. the United States to vote for you. And then you have, you know, the powerhouse. If you, if you change to the presidency to the elect to the popular vote, then you wouldn't be the president of the United States anymore. You'd be the president of New York and Los Angeles. Which is fine. And that would be it. <laughs> which, is, which is okay. You know, but, the other uh, people, the other no, people, yeah. you know, have to get a say too. Of course. That's you know? why, that's, that's why, I mean, as, much as, America as much as, yes, I think it should be a popular vote because, hey, you win a pop, you know, everything is based on a, on a popular vote. You go in front of a, you go in front of a, um, judges, like say you're at a, uh, I don't know, I'm going to use a fitness contest, and you go in front of judges, uh -huh. the judges, you have to get that, or boxing, you uh -huh. have to go with the popular, you know, the people that, the, the, if all three go for you, you're going to win, uh -huh. you know, so it's like, yes, I get the popular vote, but I also get the electoral college, which is, you know, yeah, you're going to have two major areas, or pretty much the whole west coast and east coast of the country, and everything in the middle is going to go for the other side. You know, also you have to have a, you have to have a strategy. You have to be smart enough to figure out how do I win the majority of America. People are saying, oh well, Trump couldn't have won if it wasn't for electoral college. No, he just would have won, run a different campaign and probably won. I anyway. think I, I don't think yeah, I think he would have run the same campaign. <laughs> no, it would have been it would have been different. He would have won a more yeah. a different kind of campaign. What he did was it was a hostile takeover of the Republican Party. He's not really a Republican. No, he's not. And what he did was, he, anything, really. was he realized that the Republican Party, the Bushies, what's called the neoconservatives, were out of touch with the rank and file of the party. Joe the gun rack Republican, right. Bubba the Republican. Ralph the racist. Six pack the right. Republican. <laughs> and uh, Joe the black Republican and the Hispanic Republican, which is a huge amount of people. Yeah, there is. You know, yeah. you're looking at two, three percent, I think. I know a lot of people uh, in uh, in Miami, yeah. uh, in in South Florida that voted for Tons. Trump oh. that are that are that are in, that are Cuban descent. In Florida, you know who they voted for? They voted for Herman Cain over Romney. Herman Cain was was winning by a huge margin. He was going to take the nomination. He was for a quick second, yeah. And what happened was Romney, who's a filthy campaigner, paid some women who were around him to say he sexually harassed them. But he was the dream of the Republicans because he was a he was a CEO and an ex preacher, mm. so they loved him. Yeah, you know. So, he said some crazy things, but yeah, who doesn't? You know? He doesn't say crazy. Things. He doesn't say crazy things. Everybody says crazy things. We liked, we elected Trump because he does say crazy right. things. We liked it because we liked it. You know, he was well, there to, to bother people. It, it, I'm going to say this in the microphone. I did not vote for the guy. So <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about, but I did not vote for the guy. I always vote for the Libertarian. I voted for Gary Johnson the last two I, I would have taken Gary Johnson over Trump, of course. I would have gladly taken him. You know what? He, uh, I mean, everybody made fun of him about that country thing. How about uh, he, which country? Oh, he yeah, know? Aleppo. Where's Aleppo, Aleppo? Yeah. And yeah. it was like, whatever, which big was, deal. You know, it was fine because at least they heard of him. I know, know, yeah, but it's like, big deal. It's like... Well, we like, don't care. Libertarians, we don't even want our... We don't want our presidents meddling around in the poor, in the affairs of other countries. I, uh, yeah, That's, I mean, we I want would, to close all the foreign military bases yeah. and just, just stay here in America. That's pretty much what we want to do. I do get nervous sometimes. I'm like, we have so many troops in other countries. It's like, God forbid, if like this country was attacked, and do we have enough troops here? Here, yeah. yeah. How much are we spending? Right. You know, are we spending? <laughs> they I mean, say it's for security. Right. Who's gonna attack us though? Yeah. You know. And I'm all for, you know, I, I think some of that money needs to go to the actual vets. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't spend enough money on the vets. Yeah. It's like we put all this money into the military, but nothing into the vets. And it's like, why in the world do we? Are we putting all this Well, we up? have so much, you know, that's what, it, to the guy to the guy you don't like, that's what Trump would say. He would go out and he would say, you know, I wish we didn't go into Iraq. I wish we had our $7 trillion back. We could have spent it on our hospitals, our schools, our and bridges, I, you know our roads, 
and I'm gonna everyone him, everyone would applaud. I'm going to give him one more piece of a little bit of credit, because I thought for sure, for sure, especially with the Mueller thing and everything, uh-huh. I thought for sure as a distraction <laughs> he was going to get us into another war, and he didn't, and so I'm actually, like, pretty pretty fascinated over the fact that he didn't... He's, he's pretty anti-war, and I hope he stays that way. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing I hope he just... I mean, you know, I am pulling the troops out of Syria. I got to say, yes. Yeah, I'm starting to. But as far as that spending bill, though, I'd want to impeach him over that. Right. Everyone's trying to impeach him over other things. I'd impeach him over that spending bill. Okay, let's do it. That's that's fine. I'm I'm on board with that. As long as we have something to impeach him about, I'm on board with it. Let's do it. Spending bill, why not? Actually, my taxes got screwed this year, so there you go. Well, he, he, his tax bill was meant to uh, be worth not cut for people who are, well, you have very high property taxes, which means Democratic Party states. Right. So his tax bill was aimed at Republican states with low or no property yeah. taxes. I, and that's what he did well, he, for his base. For my, uh, my, my tax return wasn't wasn't anything to jump up and down about right. this year. So. But right. I mean, I'm grateful I got something. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, I do think the economy is better, and I'm happy about that. I, you see, you think the economy is better, huh? Yeah. See, I don't, I don't see it. I mean, You're not seeing it? no, I don't see it. I don't see it as far as like jobs go. Like uh-huh. people I know that are working way harder now than they did 15, 20 years ago, and I... not making the same money. Like everything, everything's gone up except paychecks, and I don't, I don't see it. Like I don't mm-hmm. see. Okay, comedy, for instance. Look what people were making back in the 80s. They were making great livings. Can yeah. you make a living now unless see, you're that's, that top see, that's 5% rough. of stand-up? You know, and that's so right. So that's why I'm saying, like, like, is the economy really that great? I mean, how many... How Disposable many? income, like, to shop. Like, we're sitting right now, and we're seeing all these people walking around buying stuff or looking to buy things. But that's... Even when we had... Um, even when the... Uh, uh, we had 2008, when the economy uh-huh. crashed in 2008. Right. It, it, Within a year, you saw people going to Las Vegas. You saw people. I remember like walking around a mall one day, going, "Are we really in a recession? Because I don't see it." And how many people, we as comics, are competing with all these washed-up TV actors and movie actors who are now going back to stand-up because they can't get anything? Yeah, well. So you know, how can we compete with that, right? There's a lot of. I mean, there's a lot of competition anywhere. But I'm saying in general for the job part of it, I don't see it. I don't see the economy booming like everybody says it does. The. So. Uh, as far as the stand-up side of it, you know, yeah, I, I wish, I wish, you know, club owners would be a little more giving and people would be a little more helpful. But you know, it's it's a, it's a um, doggy dog world. It's a doggy dog world. I think in every industry, especially entertainment, with social media, everybody's a star now. So, you know, everybody, yeah, everybody can be a celebrity now. So, well, you know, this mall is gonna die too, unless they. You know, continue to find ways to bring people in. I don't know what this Samsung thing is. This is a Samsung phone we're recording on. But you know, they would have jazz festivals here. They mm. have uh, yeah, they should concerts have a here. They should like a, I'm surprised they don't do a. Uh, they should have concerts. Like a farmers market type thing. Or... They should have everything they possibly can here to bring yeah. people in. But you know, malls everywhere are closing. Sears are closing, stores are Sears closing, closing yeah. retail. I still get emails closing. from Sears, and it's so funny. I'm really? Like, because I went one year, one time. Um, oh, I got my 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 nephew some video games, and uh, I tried to you know save some money, so I went and got them used. Right. But I had to get the the uh, the, the the things you put them in the, ca- the cases. Right. The cases. So right. I went, I go to Sears to buy like a pack because that's the only place I could find them to right. buy a pack of CD cases. Uh-huh. And I kid you not, from that point on. You Every got day I get 10 emails from Sears, well, and I'm like, I went in there to buy it. You guys should check my buying history for me. So many of these places just did not listen and understand to their tech people who were telling me, you have to make sure you're putting money into our website, right. because that's all we're going to be is a website. You well, know? you think they knew that back Like then. Time Magazine uh, didn't make its website its focus, which they should have done, right. you know? Do you think they knew, they knew to do that back then? Well, the tech I mean, people, the people were the people screaming that, at them then to do it, they were. but they didn't. I was just saying that back then it's like, you, you know, you think like, oh, the internet's popular, but it's never going to be that popular. Right. You know, it's the you people know? that saw that that way. It's no, the no, people the that, that were working in the tech field that are like, listen, this is going to go away. Yeah. People aren't going to leave their home anymore to go shopping. So you have to make a mall. Yeah. I think malls really need to <coughs> become entertainment centers. Absolutely. 
you know, and really bring people well, in I was with just in a stuff. Ball. I was like, well, this is different because it's like it is a, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't know how some of these restaurants right. survive, but. Um, it's but, just a nice place to go and it's a tourist trap. That's what it and is. And the biggest tourist, tourist trap right. in America. Right. It's in the middle of Hollywood. Right. But you go to like, some of these malls and it's like they're desolate. But you walk in and it's, you know. Yeah, you, they see, have uh, to become entertainment. They need to start hiring comedians. Right? Anybody. Come in. <laughs> yeah. Just put us in the middle of a mall. <coughs> How many comics do you know would perform in the middle of a mall? Many. Many. Many would do it. For free. For free. Absolutely. Or at least maybe a smoothie over at Jamba Juice or something, you know? Well, you know, maybe... Hey, Edward Scissorhands. we got Edward Scissorhands. Right. Around. Maybe I will we'll approach. You know, and yeah, and then, and then the people on the boulevard out there that dresses the superheroes, you know, those are just people that just decide to do that on their own. Right. You know, they're not hired by anyone, and that makes it entertaining for people who come out and, you know, come out to this area. That has a lot more life. You know, they, the people here should take a cue from that and have superheroes running around in here. Yeah. You know, but then you have to pay Marvel and stuff like that. The people out there don't, you know. I wonder if, they, I wonder if Marvel would, never, would ever come after them for... They would if you had, you had superheroes because it's Disney, and Disney has a reputation for suing, and cause Disney bought Marvel. But those guys out on the sidewalk, they don't have to pay Marvel. But you know, it, at uh, places like uh, uh, Universal Studios and places right, like they that, to yeah, sure. that's the DC characters. That's owned by Warner Brothers, which owns DC. So they have Superman and people right. like that there. But there used to be a guy out there that looked like Jimi Hendrix that could play all the Jimi Hendrix songs. I'm like, why didn't they hire him in the mall yeah, right the mall here? here? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I guess because how. then you'd have to pay the record company. You know what I mean? Or, but you know what, just take him outside right by the front door. Yeah. You know? Put him, hire him, put him outside right by the front door on yeah. the sidewalk. Just get you know? people in. Just to bring people in, and they... they even the, even now, that. I mean, it's what, Sunday, it's Easter, oh, it is Easter, but a lot of people have off. Right. And it's like, it's not that It's busy. not that full. No. You know, you would think, so that this, this mall is going to need to do something. Yeah. You know, it's like, when I go to the movie theater now, they have an electric seat that goes back... And this foot thing comes up. Which I know. hate those things, by the way. Well, I love for short the, people, it's never the worst. Going to, really? Oh, it's the worst. I'm never going. And I'm never going reason, to another movie theater. Yeah, for some except reason, every time. That. Plus, I'm going to fall asleep. Really? In those yeah. Things. But no, every time, asleep. every time I go to those things, my foot, my foot rest never comes up all the way. <laughs> so I always like get screwed, and then <coughs> my shins are killing me halfway through the movie. Really? Yeah. And I just give me an old school theater I, well, with like a seat, and you know, like the crickety. You know, rackety seats I, that you just I, sit in, and you I think love you, it. I've never going back. I've never going to another. If I'm like going to see a movie, baseball stadium seats. That's what uh, I want. I don't want. I don't need relaxing reclining chairs. Those are the only. Not, number one, they're not short people friendly, and two, they. I'm gonna fall asleep if I get too comfortable. Get too comfortable. Yeah. The movie sucks. You can do that at home. You know. The, I only movies I really go see in the movie theater are the Marvel movies. Because obviously I grew up reading those comic books, sure. so all those characters are in my heart. You know, yeah. I cannot help that. Right. It's they're already there in my heart, and unless they really blow it like they did with the Daredevil movie, that was horrible. Daredevil with Ben Affleck. Oh then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then it's like, man, I don't want to watch this. Then they gave him Batman. Huh? They gave now him Batman. Guy, he's better as Batman. He's a much better Batman. Is he a much better Batman? That he is as so, yeah, Daredevil. Michael Keaton, that was it for me. And I, I'll take a little bit of, what's his name? Um, uh, what's his name? Christian Bale. Yeah, Christian Bale. I thought Christian Bale did a great job. I like Christian Bale. But that's it. Uh, no, I'm I was surprised. I When I heard that he was going to play Batman, I'm like, oh, he's going to ruin the character forever. But when I saw him as Batman, I was like, you know, this is good. Batman, kind of a dick. Kind of a conceited dick, right? And kind of full of himself. So you like Ben Affleck as Batman? I do. I was, I was like, this really works. You know, this is the, it's the CGI stuff. Huh? That's what it is. It's too much CGI. Now. Yeah, no, it's I want, crappy. I, I it feel, looks I, like CGI. It sucks. I feel like a seventy-year-old man when I walk out of those things. Like I'm like, my eyes hurt. And I have a headache. I can't think straight. You know, especially <laughs> the stupid uh, 3D glasses. I'm like, I just want a movie. Just right. Give me a movie. I don't need all that blowing up and. Nobody dies, you know. It's like yeah. it's just like I, I just want. I, that's why I like the old the old movies, like the older movies. It's oh, like, you know, there's a lot of times I watch just movies from the 30s and the 40s, maybe the 50s, on YouTube. 
because yeah. you know they're free and there's a million of them and I've seen so many movies from the 30s and 40s that I'll get halfway through and I'll be like oh I saw this one already you know it's like but it's, they're good movies but they're though. good movies but even even the action movies like when I was a kid like the action movies were much better because yeah. there was story I, because like, there were stories have, and characters right. like I just it was on yesterday and, and I hated it and, and uh, all special was effects Hulk. no the the Eric Banya Hulk movie was on uh-huh. uh, uh-huh. I don't know what was on it was HBO all CGI or and it's all CGI and it's like no and man get Lou Ferrigno greened up and paint and get him out there or get some yeah, Lou Ferrigno you know that was fine you know at least and a lot of people didn't know that, but Lou Ferrigno actually had a stunt man. There was he did. another bodybuilder uh, who was black, and well, I believe Body by Jake, Jake Seinfeld, also uh, uh-huh. was a stunt double for him. For he a while. was because they didn't want uh, Lou Ferrigno for the close-ups to get injured. Right. So if you stop and you freeze frame the uh, a lot of the stunt scenes with the Hulk, you can see it's actually an African American bodybuilder. Who's Ooh, also listen. really huge? Looks a little bit like Lou, and if you can find his name on yeah. the internet, look about. If anyone really cares, you can go and look it up online in the history of bodybuilding who he is. But uh, history of bodybuilding has some interesting things. In fact, there's this history of bodybuilding show on uh, YouTube, and it's called. I would watch it sometimes. Uh, now I can't remember to endorse the guy was so good. Oh, Nick's Strength and Power. And it's a history. He does a little five, ten minute videos on the history of bodybuilding. I saw that. And it's pretty interesting Nick. to look at. Yeah, Nick's Strength and Power. If, if you, look, if you look at my YouTube video search, it's 90% fitness and bodybuilding. Really? So, yeah, yeah, it really is. Uh, yeah, look at Nick's Strength and Power. I'm probably, maybe I've come across the videos then, but. There's some interesting, he, he'll do stuff on, you know, bodybuilders from the 70s. Mm or forgotten bodybuilders, or just certain aspects you know, he of does, bodybuilding. I, follow, I think he has an Instagram page. Oh, it's really? probably the Instagram page that I follow, uh-huh. and they have the same. Because there's guys that I, that I, you know, that I'm like, who the heck was this guy? <laughs> like, I never even heard of this guy, and why didn't he win an Olympia? Like, you know. Right, back, you know, right. When there's, so there's people that won the Olympia Yeah, when won. you look at Lee Haney, and it's like, yeah, he was great, but this guy could have beaten Lee Haney. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of it was... Can you peak at the right time? But when you go you on know, stage, it's all about. A lot of people were were set to win, right. but another guy came in. It just sort of like Samir Benout. Samir's a good buddy of mine. His name, really. Samir Benout, yeah. And you know, he was and he was obviously the best guy up there. Yep. You know, and uh, my favorite bodybuilder was Frank Zane, definitely. I like Frank my Zane. Favorite. Yeah, but he. Uh, I like Frank Zane. He was. So I, I got in the in the era when like. like for me, my golden era was the '90s. The '90s. Like, I love seeing uh, Dorian Yates was. Dorian Yates. Yeah, that was that was my. Uh, Dorian Yates, wonderful, absolutely. And uh, I love how he is now. I don't know if you. If you yeah, did him. you see the Joe Rogan show? Yeah, he is all with about Lee Haney. holistic stuff and oh no, Dorian. Dorian yeah, Yates. Dorian, yeah, Dorian's he all about. He hasn't had Lee Haney. He should have Lee Haney. He on. should. That'd yeah. be interesting. Yeah, I'm sure Rice he hasn't had. It. If he yeah. has, maybe he has. I don't know. A lot of people have never heard of these bodybuilders because. They didn't want to be movie stars. You yeah. know, the only well, Dorian, thing they wanted to be Dorian, was Dorian bodybuilding. Dorian came out to do the Olympia and would go back to England, and yeah, that was it. That was he, did, it. He, was, he was not into he didn't doing want magazines. To be a star. He didn't want right. to be a star. He wanted, 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 he wanted to be a bodybuilder. Yeah, and that was... In fact, he got offered when Jim Mannion... Not Jim Mannion, I'm sorry. The guy who created the WWF... Uh, what's the name? Um, right. Uh, when he New created, wrestling. When, when he created a bodybuilding aspect. He, oh, really? Yeah, years ago. He offered him, at the time, like $100,000. Uh-huh. And, and back then, that was like... A lot of money. A lot of money. And so, but Dorian was like, he turned it down. He said, nope, I'm going to stick with the IFBB. I want to win the Olympia. And he did. Yeah, well, he was he was amazing. And he had to quit because his muscles Injuries. started pulling the tendons out yeah. of the bones. Yeah, when he, uh, he was... So he huge. was He was going to try to compete his last... Uh, I mean, the, I got to see him the last year he competed. Oh, really? I went to the Olympia. That would have been nice. It was, and I I've thought for sure... i Olympia. I thought for sure Nasser El Sabati was going to beat him just because Nasser came in. Right. I mean, in fact, when He's Nasser... so out of proportion. When Nasser now. came out of the stage, I... I thought for sure that was Dorian. Like, I thought they called right. the wrong guy. Right. And then Dorian came out afterwards, and I was like, oh, jeez. Like, you know, and I, I'm a huge Dorian Yates fan. But uh, but that was his last Olympia. And then he was going to compete again, and 
that couldn't do it. it. That no, was he it. was pulling his muscles out, of, pulling the tendons yeah, he, out of the bone. Yeah, he, he uh, ripped his bicep, his tricep. Yeah, that well, was hit training, but that's why it's, you know. And so he, uh, you know, the thing about him was he was a mass monster. That's what I loved about that era. But he still had the classical oh, if you look Frank at, Zane kind right, of proportion The first four, four years of his, first four years of his Olympia. He, I don't know? care what people say. He, you couldn't get that size. He and, was the guy that could get the size and, and, and maintain the, yeah, and the, aesthetics. the classical aesthetic yep. proportions. Yep. But the guy you were talking about, Nassar, he's just a huge mass monster. I thought for unable sure. Unable to keep the I, classic proportions. He did it that one night, though. I'll really? say, yeah, the Olympia, he did it that night. I thought for sure. I think they knew it was Dorian's last year, and they said, you know what, we're going to. It's just, it's just, you know, like. I remember when, uh, God, what was his name? That was the only time I've ever seen, because I don't, you know, all these other guys compete against him. That was the only time I ever went. There are certain this could be a guys, tough one. and you look at the Olympia, and you say, now that guy that came in eighth place probably would have won if he would have known how to pose. Right. But he didn't know how to pose. A lot of guys, you can't, yeah, a lot of guys you don't can't pose. can't win if you're not able to show that the Zeke, you've worked so hard. To when, I, uh, when I was uh, working at Gold's Venice, I used to be a salesperson at Gold's Venice oh, really? years ago. And I would go into the pro shop and put on uh, posing trunks over my black pants that we had to wear. Uh-huh. And I would come out in the front desk and I would do a pose off. Oh, and really? I had I had so many like professional bodybuilders go, dude, you should teach bodybuilders how to pose. <laughs> right. Oh, I was, that's good. I, yeah, I, was, I just, I love posing, but now I'm That mean, was yeah. Ed Corny, you know, he used yep. to teach bodybuilders how yeah. to pose. And, you know, who was the guy who won the first Olympia? What was his name, uh, the black guy? Sergio Olive. No, no, the first guy was... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that was uh, uh, the guy with the arms. Yeah. Um, he was wonderful, right now. too. But the second guy to win... Sergio Olivia. yeah. Sergio Olivia. He came back in, like, 1980-something, and I thought he would have won if he would have posed correctly. But he didn't. He didn't know how to pose, right. and he came in, like, eighth place when he should have at least placed in the top three or won... But he didn't yeah. because he, he didn't. His son oh. competes now. But. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo, as you know, used to go do ballet classes yeah. just so they would be Beal. walk on the stage yeah. and, and be beautiful. And you, it's a dance, and you've got to spend a lot of time well, there's nobody learning to do if that. If you ever want to watch a great posing routine, watch uh, Dorian's 1995 yeah, Olympia. Yeah, no, he 96, could do it. 96 Olympia. He and do his it. posing, like he actually had the music. That went to his posing. Uh-huh. Nobody does that anymore. It's like yeah. you watch the I watch the shows now. It's it's just you come out, you do your obligatory poses, and, and then it. you walk off stage. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and now they have the all these categories being now. Out and, of it. Huh? The art's uh, being drained out it's, of it. It's I mean it's you know it's everything saturated now and everybody's doing it so, but and it's a it's it's like I want to see the guys that come out, and actually give a show. You know, it's like yeah, you know, you have people like. Frank Zane, who have like a pose practically named after that. Oh, of course, that. yeah. You the know, vacuum the vacuum stomach. pose. Yeah. You know, it's like, here's a here's a pose that defines the style of your physique. Right. And what you're presenting, you know, it's the personality of your, what you tried to achieve as a bodybuilder. Well, if you look at now, I mean. And now everyone's just generic. Does anyone have that pose anymore? Nobody, nobody has. You know, that, that's Dorian a, Yates would be the last one. He was, like, yeah, he had, he had two, three different poses that, right. that he was known for. But nowadays, it's like the guys don't have anything. Right. Like there's no, there's no pizzazz the guy, anymore. Who's the guy who won the last Olympia? What was his name? He's a Flex a Rotary guy. just won. Flex. Okay, and then I never thought anyone was going to beat that guy that he beat. He oh, Sean, Rotary, Sean Rotary, I'm sorry. Sean Runner just won this right. past year. Flexor Fraud is what he called but himself. But who was the guy that was winning there with the massive Phil Heath. forearm? Phil Heath. Right. You know, I didn't think anyone would ever beat Phil Heath for a long time. He was so perfect. I gotta, okay? be, I gotta be honest with you. I did not think, I mean, you know, I think this year he got, he didn't win. I mean, uh-huh. he, I mean this year he should have won. Oh, really? He should have won this year. I don't think I saw this year. So he I'm going to have to take a look. And, and, you know, the thing about it is, is, is and I follow him on Instagram and stuff. Well, and what is, you know... What, uh, all these bodybuilders that have won the Olympia, what's their pose that they're known for? You're right. You see? It's yeah. gone. It's gone, yeah. You know? Like Arnold was the was the double Arnold had, bicep. Yeah. Arnold had a few, but he had you know, a few. He had a few, and he had yeah. the side pose. Right. He also you had know, the... Those uh, were signature poses. Right. You know? He had the, uh, the, the um, back double bicep. Yeah. That was, you yeah. know, when he swings it forward like this. Spectacular. Right, but, right, right. But, uh... Yeah, no, no, nobody has. No one has. It's that just not anymore. exciting. That sports not. I mean, it's just. And it doesn't make it exciting no, anymore. No, you know what is you know exciting what I mean? about that sport is 
the conventions uh -huh. to go get free stuff to take pictures with people. Uh -huh. That's what those things now. The Olympia is really about. Well, you know, you know I'm gonna in have money. to. I'm gonna have to go to one of those. It's on my bucket list to go to an Olympia event. But I you lived, know, when I was out in Vegas, we uh, we would do the show at the Hilton, uh, which you know had part of the overflow of the convention. Right. All the guys would come through, and I would see guys that I used to see at events and stuff. And um, you know, like I saw Ronnie Coleman. Not when uh -huh. he's competing, but this is right. after he competed, you know, and it's like, and I'd see Ronnie. Ronnie actually ate my brownies one day. Oh, really? At Gold's Gym, yeah. That guy could probably eat a lot of food. He, 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 uh, one of the, uh, one of the, uh, fitness, uh, instructors maybe a, a plate of, uh, applesauce brownies. Uh -huh. And he comes in one day and he sits, and he's kind of like, hangs them. over and he goes, can I have one? And I was like, yeah, sure. So, you know, I walked away. I came yeah, back, yeah, the plate was empty. All gone. Right all right gone. Right. Like, Ronnie Coleman ate my brownies. Ronnie but, Coleman ate my brownies. But you know the, the the thing about him too is he doesn't have a signature pose either. No, Ronnie didn't really. But he was wonderful. I mean, he was superb. Yeah. But you know, pose until you get something that is unique to you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. I you mean, the, the sport is now with with the it's gone in a different direction. They're trying to get more of the fitness aspect of it. With, right. With um, like they've gotten the Olympia now doesn't run. Uh, uh, a Miss Olympia, you know, they got rid of that you category. Win what? They, they got rid of the Miss Olympia category. Oh, really? For a couple of years now, yeah. Arnold still, the Arnold Classic still has a, 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 woman uh, a woman's bodybuilding body show. Well, but, you know, they split that into different things. They but have now it's the giant steroid monsters. Then you have a fitness. Now you have category. the fitness, which the physique, the men's physique, which I find, you know, fun, funny, but. Uh, because <laughs> you know the guys, the, the, guys, the, guys the guys, the guys, the guys, the guys that don't want to train legs. You know, yeah. so that's basically. How they, do we bark at yeah, this they come out in, the normal guy? They come out in board shorts. Yeah, you know, that's and, no good. Yeah, but but I mean their physiques, their upper body physiques are amazing. Yeah. You know, a lot well, of these guys, is, a lot of these guys look like Frank Zane. You know, on the from the not, waist up. At least on the upper body, but that's not bodybuilding. You no. need to build. Yeah. Every part. Of I mean, some of these guys have legs, obviously. A lot of the guys have legs, you but know? it's just it's the guys that don't want to go the extra mile. Yeah. steroid wise or, right. or you know or what do you have to do to grow that big yeah you so a lot but, of weight on your back and and i'll say this like it is a smart move that the ifbb did that because it has a category now that a lot of more people can right. compete and relate to and relate to. so that's and that's what's going to drive money to these you're always you're, yeah monsters. you're always going to have the mass monsters and people want to watch them right, yeah. you know like but but really nobody's I mean, a very small fraction is ever going to be able to get to that level. So you have these, yeah, another category that's a little more. Who was the guy that quit? The black guy, and he was always coming in second. He couldn't be Phil He. Oh, uh, Kai Green. Kai Green. There was one year now, Kai. So he was a pretty good poser. There was he worked out, uh, amazing. He used to paint. Yeah. He used to do paintings of himself posing. Oh, you so see, he's that a great artist. He's a fantastic better. artist. You see? Yeah. And that that was good, and I like that that he's bringing the There was artist one. There was it. one year where. He could have beat Phil Heath, um, and then like they had a good rivalry going for a little bit. Right. But that was like you don't see that anymore, you know. And yeah. everything's so social media now, like like whether it's comedy or bodybuilding or or I mean any other really entertainment type driven industry out there. Uh -huh. Everything's so saturated now, and it's like you know like there's no ri there's no fun rivalry. It's like everything's just yeah. you know who has more followers or who has more. Right. I don't know, it's just there's just. There's just no more fun about it, you know. Yeah. It's, it's just that. It can drain the it can drain the fun out of it. Yeah. Everyone gets their 15 minutes now. Yeah. Every, on Twitter. Yeah. You know, my Twitter account I used to get a lot more retweets, and now I don't anymore. I don't know why. You know, it's just the the way it is. I had Twitter for about two days, and then I. And you just gave it up. I gave it up. I was like, I, I, I felt like I was. I don't need another social media outlet. I, was, I got I got on Twitter because people were stealing my jokes. Yeah. And practicing them in front of me, so I started doing, putting all my jokes on Twitter. Twitter. Gotcha. And so it's kind of a copyright. Yeah. So that you know, if I see it five years from now in a uh, Netflix special, I can say, look, I wrote this five years ago. <laughs> you know, just to, just to let people know, don't steal my stuff. Yeah, I think I, I think practice it in front of me. One of the good things about social media has definitely put a kibosh on comics stealing other comics before. Yeah, no, it that's a good thing. It actually has. I, I, uh, because of all the, you know, people recording everybody now and calling people out and stuff. Right. I mean, it does get a little much at times, but, but at least it's being addressed. I think you know? I could accidentally, you know, you can, uh, you can have a joke, you can accidentally, you know, do something. In fact, I'll do a joke 
And I'll think, you know what? I'm worried someone else has done this, Joe. And I'll oh, I do stop that. doing I'll it. Do it all, I do that all the time. Whenever I write you know? something out, I go, oh, somebody I'm sure has done this. But so why, why this, would I do it? I wrote this joke that was like, uh, I met that guy from Braveheart, you know, the real guy, not Mel Gibson, but the real guy. And I went up to him and I asked him for change for a dollar. But he told me that he would give me no quarter. <laughs> But I think I worry about that joke. I'm like, and I ask people, have you heard that? But they're like, no. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. But yeah. you know, I worry that someone has a similar joke. And then I've heard other comics. There was another comic the other day that took one of my punchlines, but had a completely different joke. And I'm like, should I go up and say something to him? You know? No. I don't. I had know. a punchline. I mean, I, I think that's. I mean, you're a. You're more of a. Um... You know, you do a lot of current event stuff. I right, right, right. You know, I, I do more life stories. Right. And so nobody can steal my life story yeah. the way I look at it. I do so a lot of stuff. When you, when you do current events stuff, stuff like you do have to, you know, that is like, I, you know, yeah. I've seen a lot of comics. It's like you got to be very careful on how well, you word it because somebody may have done that. Yeah. But right. Someone may have done that. Nobody's going to steal a joke about something that happened to me. Happened I mean, they can. They, they can, can steal it. But... Nobody's gonna think of it if it right. didn't. If it happened to me directly, then nobody's gonna think of it. So, yeah, you like know. when comic, when people come up and they go, "Not in comics," because comics really don't. We might give each other help on punchlines, but yeah. nobody comes up and says, "You should do a joke about this." Um, but people do that all the time, and it's like, yeah, you think it's funny, and it, and it probably is, but you probably got it from somewhere else, or you heard it from somewhere else, and now you're telling me, so there's no freaking way I'm taking Oh, yeah, there's you're, absolutely no you know, way. I'm, people I, do that all the time. I'm never going to take no way advice do that. or a story when when people come up and go, oh, yeah, it wouldn't be funny. You should do a bit about this. And it's, it's like, right. no, no, I That's shouldn't. something you heard from some of right. the comic. Yeah, yeah know, some of the comic, or maybe you saw on television. Or, third person yeah, told it to you. Yeah, no, I would somebody never Somebody else saw it on TV. No. You know, it's, very rarely has somebody ever come up to me and said, "Oh, you should do a bit about something about this." And I was like thinking, Ooh, "That would be." Or <laughs> they heard a bit that I did, and so then they said, "You know, hey, you know, have you ever tried this?" And it was like, "All right, possibly." Right. Yeah. So, there's no. There's no. Uh, uh, there's no coming back from that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, you, you there's no way that anyone's gonna use that kind of stuff. But, you know, we have to put up with that all the time. We do. Canadian. But anyway, the, uh, but uh, there's one other point I was going to make on that. I don't know. I don't know if I should say something to him about his one punchline. Uh, punchline I don't know. If, if it's verbatim. It's, it's the same punchline, but he wrote another, and he had been setup at my it. show. You were another setup for it. So it's like. But it's like, it's like okay, it's like the whole. Um, I'm trying to think of a joke that a lot of people do, and they do it in a different way. Um, once you go black, you never go back. You right. know, everybody has. Like, I've seen a few right. different versions yeah, of that, yeah, yeah. and it's like you know. So it's like, I always, if the setup was very similar, then I'd be like, definitely, say something to him. Yeah. If the punchline is like, you know. I get tired of hearing the same routines over and over again. You a lot of comics. Yeah. Are doing the same routines, you know, and then you go back and you listen to someone like George Carlin. And it's like, man, that's still so completely original, you know? Oh, of course. You know, it's just completely, yeah. no one can even copy that. No, you know, no, it's, it's so his, uh, it's so amazing. His, his stand-up was, I mean, it was, I mean, I love Richard Pryor. My all-time Richard favorite Pryor. comic is Richard Pryor. I mean, I love but the way know, he, Everyone's copying him constantly, yeah. you know? I hate to say it, forgive me, but so many black comedians are doing reworked Richard Pryor routines from the 70s. See, the only, I... The reason why I love Richard Pryor so much is as much as I like to tell stories, uh-huh. I could never be Richard Pryor, nor uh-huh. nor would I assume to be. Right. So it's like that's why it's so different from you. It's so different from me. Right. That as a comic, as a performer. So you love it. That, that's what I love. I yeah. love. I love like Carlin. I mean, I would. I, I consider myself a safe comic. Uh-huh. So like, I'm never gonna be a Carlin. I'm right. never gonna go out there and just start talking about the government. Pussy and, parts. Yeah, and all that. I'm never gonna do it. Though I'd like to, I'm, uh-huh. I just know me. I'm never going to do you. it. It's not, it's not me on stage. So, like, that's why when people do start, you know, copycatting other comics, it's like, you know, like, I, I can honestly say I, my style is mine. Right. You know, it's it's me. It, some, it, most of the time it works, sometimes it doesn't. So, right. but it's at least me. You right. know, whereas in, like, other comics who do copycat, you know, like when Tosh came out, everybody was trying to be Daniel Tosh. Daniel Tosh. You know, everybody was trying to be Daniel Tosh. And it was like, 
no, it's it's that's his style, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, it's always good to kind of pick up, you know, mannerisms or act outs. Yeah. You know? like, like one of the things I love Richard Pryor is his act outs, so I I try to incorporate act outs in my set. But I'm never gonna be him. I'm never gonna right. talk about the stuff he talked about because. We're two different people. And he would do characters sometimes too. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I could watch any Richard Pryor special. My over style and over is over. that I love to my jokes to be kitschy and in bad taste. I love <laughs> bad taste. You know, it's like I love that kitsch and that bad taste. And a lot of people don't understand that that's intentional. And uh, you're a good joke writer, man. Thank I've, you. I've, I've, uh, Thanks, man. Because I can't, I can't do what you do. Right. You know, I can't do this the quick setup punchline. Yeah. You know, it's like, to me, it's a lot harder to write a set-up punchline type joke than it is a story. Right. I can write a story, you know, in my head in five a lot minutes. Of storytelling comics like, <coughs> what's his name? Uh, who's that guy, that Australian guy? You know, he's a storytelling comic, and he can't do... Jim Jeffries, or...? Jim Jeffries, yeah. I mean, he can't write, you know, regular jokes. I, I, I started a Twitter account also to teach myself to write short jokes. Short jokes, yeah. Yeah, I got I, I, I have a few of them in my that I've written over the years that I have in my, that I've saved back, you know, uh-huh. if I need to jump to one of them real quick. Right. But like when I host, it's really hard if I have to go up and do a few minutes in between. Yeah. Because most of the stuff I have is two, it's three, long. four minutes. Right. So it's like, it's like, I usually save those when I host just so I have something to that's, throw out there. That's why I started writing short jokes and I just thought, you know, what are, what are the, is a joke that I really love? Like one a joke that I really love, I don't know who told it, was, uh, what did the sadist say to the, uh, the? What did the masochist say to the sadist? What hurt me? <laughs> what did the sadist say? No. Oh, that's funny. Okay, it's this ironic, funny thing. It's not a ha 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 funny, right. but it's an ironic funny. So I thought, you know, hey, that's interesting. What's the basis of that? You know, so I'm like, well, how about a narcissist? What did the narcissist say to the narcissist? Yeah. Love me as you love yourself yeah okay so there's a joke that's the same kind of dry kind of thing but i haven't stolen the joke i've just t- taken the basis of it and switched around from sadist and masochist but what did the sadist what did the uh sadist say to the narcissist uh i'd love to hurt you what did the what did the narcissist say i'd love to hurt me too <laughs> So, you know, you can take a joke and <coughs> without stealing it, right. you can rewrite it. And then what about the opposite? What did the narcissist, if you say, what did the uh, narcissist say to the, the sadist? I said, uh, you're not good enough at hurting people to hurt me. What did the sadist say? <laughs> you, can, you can keep this Try joke going. Me. Try me. <laughs> okay? So it's like I haven't stolen the joke. But I've stolen the the basis of the joke, which is nothing new. Right. It's yeah. a universal. Yeah. I mean, people thing. do comics do it all the time, but but if you're if you're, you know, like I said, if you're writing. I stuff, love doing stuff like that. It's yeah, one of the ways it's fun. I write jokes. No, it's it's fun to write stuff like that. I, I like I said, I wish I could sit down and write. Short set up. jokes. Yeah, I really do, man. I can't. I can't. I just I just don't have. Uh, I don't know. I'm always fascinated by. Uh, there was a comic I worked with years ago, who literally did a 10 minute set. And did ten minutes of one liners. One liners. It's very hard because yeah. I'm I'm moving in that direction. It's rough. And it's, tough. it's rough. Well, the reason why is that to me it's memorization. Like, memorization. They're not related to yeah, each other. That and it's like you got to think. I gotta. If I do a ten minute set, I literally can have three or four bits. Right. And I'm done. And my ten right. minutes is done. Right. If I do a ten minute set like that, that's like what eighty jokes. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna remember eighty jokes. I'm lucky if I can remember four bits. That's that's the difficulty. Of writing the one-line jokes, but but you know like Jimmy Carr. Oh. See, he's the master of the short joke, mm. and his sets are like that. He does an hour and a half of that of short jokes. Well, Geechee Guy does that too. Yeah, who's Ge- that? Geechee Guy. He was like I'll have to look him up. He was like a Guinness Book guy or something like that. He did like the most jokes in like an hour or something uh-huh, like that. Right. And I worked with him in Vegas. He was it was fascinating to see uh-huh. him. He literally is like rapid fire. Right. It's just rapid fire jokes. I remember I worked when I first started doing stand up. I did a, um, um, a showcase show at the uh, Orleans Hotel, and I remember this one guy, he was that, he was, uh, you know, he wrote the, and it was very funny, the guy was uh-huh. extremely funny, he wrote, set up, you know, punchline, quick, right. jokes. quick jokes, and he went up, and he actually, it was it was so depressing, 
I can tell the story. I won't say the guy's name, but I don't even know. The guy. I don't think the guy was comedy. I don't think he did comedy after that night. I think he was uh-huh. done. But he, very good writer, but he couldn't. He knew he couldn't remember his jokes, so he actually went up with an earpiece. Oh, really? In his ear, and it was the most awkward thing. He would say a joke, wait about ten seconds, and kind of like almost like you could see his lips moving. Oh, really? To the to the next bit. To the next. And then he joke. would do the joke, yeah. and it was like to the point where like I remember like my uncle was in the audience, and he said he like made up. He was like kind of he goes. Hey, who was that kind of that special guy that went up? Like, right. Because he was, thought he was like kind of mentally handicapped. And, you know, when uh, you look at Jimmy Carr, I saw him. In fact, I ran to the comedy store because Jimmy Carr, who's an English comic, a one-liner comic, short joke comic, comic, and I went there to the comedy store to see him and to meet him. And when he went up, he went up. He's kind of a fastidious guy, and he wears a a suit. Hi guys. And then he has uh, he has his jokes if he's working on them. They're typed out and printed on a clipboard, and they're typed out. It's right. So it's like the same. The, he's really like that. He's, you see a fastidious you know, in his dress. Somebody should have told this guy. Who in a vest. Because I've seen comics go on stage like with their set list on their right. bottle of beer or something right. like that. You know, it's and I worked with a comic and I had put out his. You know, he had a table so he had cue cards. Right. But you know, the audience can't see it. That's what this guy should have done. He literally went up with an earpiece. Yeah, just put them on, just ask put, for a stool, yeah, just put and, on. Have and have a li- note. And, and have, your, have your list there, because that is a heart. That is like... If you... Sometimes I go up and I'll have like, you know, 20, I'll just have one word for the routine right. or the joke. Right, and, that, and that's fine, because at least you look down and you go, you oh, look, that's the next one I'm going right. to do. But you know the joke. It's just like, can you actually sit there, and again, Geechee Guy is an anomaly because the guy's been doing stand-up for... 30, 40 years or whatever, right. and he literally, that's what he's done all of his life. Uh-huh. So by now, of course, the guy can do an hour of just rapid fire Touch. Yeah, yeah. jokes, just quick jokes and get them out, but it's still, I mean, it's amazing to watch. I, I, I would watch him, because I opened for him uh, at the Rio, and I would watch him, and I literally was like fascinated. Like, uh-huh. you know, some of the jokes were, were hilarious, and some were, yeah, okay, but literally, I was fascinated by how even if he did the same set every night right which he really did how do you memorize how do you memorize that many jokes like he literally would go up and do like a good 40 minutes of just one just boom, joke. boom 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 and it was like the man thing, it, it's impressive the thing about my stuff is i try to stick together a bunch of jokes that are about the same about day. the same subject and yeah. i do topical stuff and sometimes it just writes itself like when the harvey weinstein thing came out I had an hour on Harvey Weinstein because it was so funny. It was so, I was just writing these jokes. But after a while, as it fades from the memory, it's mm. no longer, people stop laughing at the joke. Yes, yeah. So you have to, you have to or take you find, some of them out or you leave one. I was going to say, you, have, you find a couple you that you really, one right. really stick. sticks. Yeah, and then, then you use that. But it's like, no, man, it's impressive. If, if somebody can do that, if somebody can sit down and write, that many jokes. And like then lately, too, I've been telling the joke and then just pausing for a long time. What, and and that's, then people start laughing right. and it builds. Builds. Because people are getting because they're thinkers. That's the other thing, I'm too. I'm realizing you got to slow down and when, give people when, more yeah, time. When you do those type of jokes, you got to let them breathe. Let them breathe. Yeah, with, with storytelling, time. you can, you know, you can you can hit punchlines within the story, and if it doesn't get the laugh you're looking for, you just go to the next one. Right. But you know, so even I have to tell myself, slow down sometimes, let let the laughs breathe. You know, and it's right. Like, you gotta let it. You gotta let you know, it breathe. Yeah, because you're right. Some people, you know, a lot of people have a hard time. Uh, even when I go to a show, I, you know, somebody might do a joke and I might not get it right away, and then a second or two later, I'm like, oh, that was funny. Yeah, you know? I I can go do a do a show, and sometimes I'm like. I'm trying to read the audience, and I don't really know what they want, mm. so I'll throw out like, you know, eight or ten jokes, and see which one they really laugh at, and then that's the direction that I'll go yeah. in. Like for some weird reason, they want political jokes. You know, I was, I was performing in front of this gay audience, and they loved political jokes and jokes about Caitlyn Jenner. They loved that. I'm they like, that. you know, just read, you know, from. You know, telling the different getting. jokes. Do they want the silly puns? Actually, that's you know, funny. Silly yeah. puns if you have, the, if you have, you have that type of material, you can really do that sort of thing. Right. You know, it's like, you know, me, I have to, I have to, I have to 
figure out the audience before I go on stage. Right. So <laughs> yeah. I have to watch a comic do something Difficult. and then try to yeah. figure it out. Yeah, watch the comics before. Yeah, you. yeah, figure it out. But I, I'm always fascinated when comics don't, when they don't read the crowd or the audience before they go on stage. It's like, you know, if you have a comic or two in front of you, you know, you don't, yeah, don't, you don't have to worry about necessarily paying to the other comics. Right. Attention to the set that the comic's doing. I mean, I, I think you still support, laugh a little bit, help out right. when you can. But read the audience. Most importantly, you know what the audience read the audience. Is. You know, if the audience isn't in a... I did a show the other night and um, didn't have a great set. It was not uh -huh. a good set. Right. Um, I thought I could read the audience, but... Um, they just weren't. It wasn't. They just weren't really in the material. There used to like there used to be this Hispanic, working class Hispanic bar that I used to go to, mm. and I would do shows there. And there would be like mostly you know working class Hispanic guys there that were there just to have a drink before they went home, right? Yeah. And they didn't like it when girls were dirty. Female comics were dirty. Really? And I was like, and I told this girl, they don't don't be dirty. They don't like that. She and she can't be dirty, and they did not like they it. Like it. I could be dirty. They loved it when a male was dirty, they just but didn't they like didn't the like female. it when a female was dirty. Huh, interesting. You know? So you have to, like, look at that kind of stuff and know that kind of and stuff. And, you know, comic, comics aren't going to listen anyway, so. Yeah. Comics aren't going to go, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do. It's like, that's that's the comic mentality. That's, that's but I always, true. I mean, that's why I, I always draw the line at safe of being a safe comic. It's like, if I know the crowd's not into something, or the audience is not into something, I'm going to go up and I'm going to try to play it safe right you know and it's like you know if you're doing a long time on stage it's different you can kind of play with it a little bit but when you're doing a 10 or 15 minute set you don't mm -hmm. you know just play it safe you know yeah just, if you know what the audience is looking for i have my safe. long versions of my routines when i'm doing featuring and then i have a yeah a shorter version well, I mean, when i'm you know, you know there's stuff you can go not. to and and uh you know that you can you can have you know ready to go right. in longer sets, but you can also do crowd work. You can let stuff breathe a little bit. You can kind of you piggyback know, I on don't jokes do and crowd work unless I have a heckler. Oh, then no. I start talking to the heckler because I'm never offended or mad. I'm just like, okay, this person's talking. Yeah, to I me. never. Yeah, that's I why just I, stay in the bit and I'll kind of talk. To knock them a on wood. Bit. I mean, I've only been heckled a, a couple of times in my comedy career, but. Um, I'm not good at dealing necessarily with hecklers. Uh, I mean, I, uh, yeah, I can, but I, I like, uh, you know, sometimes it's just fun if the audience isn't really in the material. Yeah. Just, and I, I'll never go after, like, I, I, I don't do it, you know, mean. I, I don't go That's after an audience. That's one thing I'm going to have to work on is doing crowd work. It, it, I've gotten better at it over <laughs> the years. I'm not, I don't think I'm a great crowd work comic at all, but I've gotten better at it, and it's just something that I find fun to do when material isn't necessarily clicking or you know maybe have to work on it if more. you do a little bit of it and then now you've got them now you can go back to material because now yeah. they're, they're going to trust you so that's all it is but you know i had the i was in vegas the other day doing a gig and i had everyone laughing i was doing really really well and there were, there were two people over the bar over here mm -hmm. that weren't laughing and were kind of talking to each other and didn't think i was funny at all and the girl said uh Oh, you think they're funny? And I said, well, all these people over here think I'm funny. <laughs> and then all those people over there all applauded and laughed and thought that was great. Then they shut up. So it's like, it's 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 difficult. Once I had also, uh, I was at Ha Ha Cafe. It was, a, it was pretty full. And I was doing some kind of offensive material and some PC type. But saying, that's not funny. You know, and I'm just like, you know, but everyone, I said to her after a while, Everyone else, she said it again and again and again. Mm. And I said, well, everyone else here thinks it's funny. Right. So why don't you be shut up and let them enjoy it? Yeah. And she said, okay. And everyone applauded. And she shut up. And then, but sometimes you have a heckler and you just, I just talk to them. I just think, I just stay in the bit that I'm doing and just talk to them and then go back to the bit. Yeah. I mean, I think, you That's know. really the only crowd work I've done. Oh, really? I really need to work on crowd, uh, except when I'm hosting sometimes. Yeah. <coughs> Especially with other comics, if, if you I'm can, hosting at a mic or something like that. Right, if you can host, like when you're hosting and you're doing like a mic where you're bringing up like eight comics, yeah. that's a good time to, to do a little crowd work yeah. in between, you know, instead of doing like, well I again, you have short jokes, so it's good. Because what I do is I'll tell like maybe the last comic 
told a joke about something. Yeah, you have a joke and about. And I'll go up and, and piggyback it. Continue the joke and piggyback yeah. it. And, that, and that's good. That's good to do. But you know, also too, it's take the time to do a little bit of crowd work. Right. You know, but you know, I'm gonna have to start doing that a little bit too. Yeah, I'm, I, I like. I, I enjoy it though. I've gotten better at it. So. So. Huh? You got to pee. Oh, you gotta, okay. Well, we, <laughs> we've been at this for a while. Let me see. This is pretty good length. Let's. Uh, where can people find you? People can find me. Uh, well, be at. Uh, Pachunga this weekend coming up. Yeah. Uh, and then people can find me at J V N Comedy. It's Jeremy Wien. W I E A N D. And uh, yeah, that's about it. On Instagram, Facebook, and all that other. Definitely not Twitter though. You won't find me on Twitter. Won't find you won't find you me on Twitter. Twitter. I just won't be on Twitter. I think I wrote like two tweets and that was it. So. All right. Well, thanks for coming on for Five you, Potatoes. Thank you. We we managed to have a pretty good time. Great time. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. See you next time on Five Potatoes.